Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, we are going to be looking at Scappy. So this was uh, a video suggestion that was posted, uh, I think, in uh, the uh, the end of January. And uh, I have to admit, it is a very, very good suggestion because of how powerful and how important Scappy is to know. So uh, this video will be an introduction to just all the most requested functionality that you wanted me to to demonstrate um, in regards to how to perform them with Scappy. So uh, let's get started. So if you do not know what Scappy is, Scappy is essentially uh, one of the best packet manipulation tools around. So it allows you to create any packets that you want. You know, you can create them, manipulate them. Um, and you'll see what I mean right now. You might be wondering like what uh, you know, what advantage does this give us or what's, uh, why do we need to do this? Well, I'll get to that in a second. Now, one of the prerequisites for, uh, for understanding what I'm going to be doing here is obviously understanding the OSI layer. And uh, the reason that's important is because uh, you need to understand the protocols we'll be working with. Now, of course, granted, uh, in this video, I'll be uh, demonstrating uh, these methods using IPv4, given the fact that it's the most popular. Uh, I would uh, I would guess that you understand the OSI layer. If you don't, don't worry. I'll probably need to make a video on this because it is quite important. And uh, we'll also have to discuss the transport layer, the network layer, some of the most important layers that uh, really come into play when it comes down to penetration testing. Okay, that being said, um, you know, I'm pretty sure you know uh, about the transport layer, which uh, essentially revolves around TCP and UDP. You then have the network layer, which is uh, your protocols. So, you know, your internet protocols, the routing of traffic on network. So IPv4, IPv6. And uh, then you, you can, uh, the, the thing is with SCAPI is you can select any of these layers uh, and, you know, play around with the packet uh, creation and manipulation. Now, uh, before we get started, uh, the, so the requests were made in regards to how to create a... Uh, how to create a packet that sends a message across the uh, across the network. That was the first request, which was quite uh, important. So I'm going to be starting off with that first. OK, and then the other one was how to sniff traffic on a network, which is quite easy. And I, I, I don't know why you would use Scappy, given the fact that it's quite powerful. Uh, regardless, you can use other um, other traffic uh, uh, analyzing or capturing tools like Wireshark. Uh, in, in 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 regards to Wireshark, we are going to be using it to to show or to prove that I did create a packet and I did send it to its target. So uh, and then finally, uh, how to perform a simple DOS or DDoS it, as people would call it. The truth is, you really can't perform a DOS um, on the network. And I'll get to this in a second when we get to that. So let's get started. Uh, with uh, with the basics. So you might be asking why why Scappy is important and why I would need to learn it. Well, first of all, Scappy is a huge tool that has a lot of functionality and I'm going to be covering what uh, you guys have requested me to cover, which to be honest is quite important. Uh, so essentially, Scappy is used for testing different aspects of a network. So for example, when you talk about uh, creating packets or creating custom packets, I can modify a packet to test certain vulnerabilities, for example, on a firewall. So let's say I wanted to test the security of a firewall. And, uh, you know, I wanted to, uh, for example, my firewall is obviously filtering traffic. So and there is a filter, you know, that is um, stopping or protecting Essentially, stopping, stopping is the correct word, stopping certain IP addresses from uh, from connecting to a service and, you know, the firewall is protecting. So you can create these uh, these packets that change the source address, uh, you know, somewhat. And uh, obviously, the the destination is going to be the, the service, but you change the source address um, or, or the source IP and uh, and manipulate it so that it can pass through the firewall, you know, with whatever data or information that you wanted to send. Essentially, you know, just uh, performing a test on firewalls. Now, of course, you can perform these tests on web servers. And this is uh, usually the way uh, vulnerabilities are found on web servers by sending different types of data that the web server is not ex uh, expecting. OK, and you'll get to see what I mean in a second. Now, of course, I'm not going to be covering this in depth because it is a very advanced tool and it probably should have its own series. My virtual machine was turning off there. 
Uh, that being said, let's get started. So Scappy is pre-installed in Kali Linux and uh, in Parrot OS. And it is, uh, it is based on Python, which is great, which makes it extremely versatile. And uh, to, to be quite honest, uh, we are going to be, um, we will be looking at it quite a lot uh, on the channel now, given the fact that we're moving up, up the ladder in terms of penetration testing. But that being said, we're going to be focusing on IPv4. Uh, and just to put uh, that into uh, into perspective, we uh, Scappy does support IPv6, but again, that's not what we're going to be looking at right now. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. I know I've explained a lot, but it was quite important for me to explain uh, the origins and how and why it works. All right. So uh, let me just expand my terminal here. Um, let's increase that font size so everyone can see what's going on. All right. So uh, to start it off, just type in Scappy. And you want to give that a few seconds. And of course, it's going to give you this error telling you that no route was found for uh, the IPv6 destination. Don't worry about that. That's uh, that's default. As I said, it does support uh, IPv6, but we're not going to be using that. All right. So uh, what do we do first? So the first thing that you guys requested was how to send a message across the Internet, uh, across a network. Of course, how to create a packet from uh, a, a, a varied source IP. Uh, to a destination IP of any. So that's very simple. Uh, we are going to be using the ICMP protocol, which is the Internet Control Message Protocol. And the reason we're going to do this is because uh, it essentially uses the, the Internet Protocol to deliver data to a target. So it does this by encapsulating the data in the packet. So it so, sort of just sends a packet with the data that you want to send. In this case, uh, we are sending uh, like a simple message. Okay, so uh, we use the send command. Now, of course, you can you can explore the functionality, the additional functionality of Scappy with the ISC tool and use the brackets to uh, to specify the option there. And once I hit enter, uh, for some reason that isn't working. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. I think I know what the issue is there. All right. So what I was saying is that uh, when it comes down to sending or, or the syntax, uh, just follow along because the, the syntax is quite intuitive in, in the sense that you should be able to uh, to understand what I'm doing. Uh, it's it's kind of like a pseudo uh, pseudo syntax in which you get uh, what's going on. Um, and uh, so as I was saying, when, in terms of sending a message, we say send and then in brackets, we specify the protocol, which is in the Internet protocol. And then we open another bracket and this is where we specify our source IP address. Okay, so our source IP address is going to be anything. So uh, you open up the, your quotation marks and the source. So uh, let's say we wanted to spoof an IP address, not ours. We can say any uh, any IP on our network sent this I, uh, sent this packet. So uh, we can say, um, let's see, on my network, uh, 192.168.1.103. I don't know if there's an actual device on my network with that IP. So uh, we'll guess uh, we'll just see what happens. So that's the source IP. We then need to select our destination IP. Uh, you know, this will be the destination of the packet. And of course, given the fact that we're not selecting our our machine IP as the source IP, that means uh, we are essentially spoofing uh, packets that, uh, you know, whose source uh, IP is uh, is one of a different uh, computer or device connected to the network. So you can see how this becomes useful, especially on a local network when you're trying to hide identities or just test services in regards to how they would respond to uh, probably if you're testing like a blacklisted IPs and, uh, you know, just experimentation really in regards to networks. So then we select our destination port and that is done by selecting DST, uh, sorry, DST and um, we open up our quotation marks and specify our destination port. Our destination port can be any, but since I want to explain this concept, uh, I'm going to select my uh, my access point. So 192.168.1.1. And we'll analyze this in Wireshark. So in fact, let me just start up Wireshark because we will need this. Uh, so because we need to capture the data. So I'm going to monitor on my Ethernet uh, zero, which uh, is what I'm using right now. I'm not using any wireless adapters. If you are, uh, you know, using it for your primary internet connection, you don't need to be in monitor mode at all. So let's start off Ethernet zero and yeah, data is being captured like so. All right. So uh, that is the destination IP. Now, once you have selected the destination IP, uh, we now need to select uh, the protocol that we'll be using, in this case, the ICMP protocol. So we close this bracket and we say ICM, 
ICMP. And then after we've specified the protocol, it's either an echo or uh, uh, we're either sending an echo request, but in this case, we are not, we're not specifying any type of ICMP, uh, any type of ICMP message, um, any type of ICMP request. Um, uh, so ICMP, and then as I said, the data can be stored in plain text. So ICMP, and then uh, we, we then specify the message. So we use a forward slash there. And then we finally specify the message, which in this case can be uh, really, really simple. So we can say, hello world, world. And uh, if I uh, yeah, close this up and yes, we close the parentheses. All right, so if I hit enter uh, for some, uh, for some reason we're getting a syntax error here. I'm not too sure why um, ICMP, uh, that is correct. I'm not so sure we're supposed to specify any request because I'm simply just sending the data in the packet. Um, let's see, did I close the second bracket? Yes, I did. So we're sending an IP here. Uh, let me just analyze this. Apologies for this. Um, I don't know what the uh, the error is really. Uh, so ICMP, we're not specifying anything in there. And uh, for some reason we keep on, uh, let me just enter that again, line one. So. The error is telling me that there's a syntax. Uh, there's something wrong with the syntax. So yeah, I uh, probably forgot to, to to use the forward slash to separate uh, to separate the data or the header. So yeah, make sure you use the uh, the forward slash right there to um, to separate the protocol from the header data in regards to the source IP and the destination IP. I haven't used Scappy in a while. Uh, so I apologize for that. So uh, if we go into Wireshark, you can see that it said we sent the one packet right here. So if we go into Wireshark and uh, now uh, if we wanted to specify our destination IP, you can go through this. Uh, let me just stop that right there. Um, I probably have blurred the data in regards to the um, to the um, to the source IP just to to keep my data secure and my privacy. So. Uh, let me just right click here on the destination section. I'm pretty sure you know how to use Wireshark. I, I will be updating the Wireshark section. So I can apply this as a filter. So selected, that's the filter. And then in at the top bar here, uh, you can see we have specified our filter as the, the destination. And in here, we, uh, as our destination, we specify the, uh, the route IP and let's hit enter. And as you can see, we did receive it. Uh, the source was 182.168.1.103. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, the protocol was ICMP and as you can see, um, uh, if we just go to the bottom right here, you can see that our message was hello world. That was, uh, that was sent in, uh, as the uh, ICMP message right here, hello world. And you can look at, uh, you can analyze the other information. So that was how to send data, you know, or how to spoof an IP. First of all, uh, create a, a different source IP and destination IP with your own custom message. And of course you can send a multitude of different type uh, of different data in here using different protocols. And we'll get to that in a second when we talk about performing a simple DOS attack. But for now, uh, let's move on to the second request, which was how to perform network sniffing. All right, so network sniffing again is a weird request because you can perform this as, as you just saw with Wireshark, but irregardless of that, it is quite complicated. If I remember the syntax correctly, um, so the, um, the syntax is quite simple in regards to understanding it. So sniff, and then in here we specify our interface. So I face, uh, the syntax is quite different from what you would expect, but very intuitive, as I mentioned. So the interface we're going to be using is e uh, ethernet zero, similar to what we did, just did with Wireshark. So again, as I mentioned, very intuitive. So ethernet zero, and, um, we now need to select our, um, our print data. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, print data is in form of Lambda. So Lambda, um, and then in here, we need to specify what type of traffic, uh, we want to display. We can display an active display, which means it will show us everything in regards to the packets being sent and received. What do I mean by this is we will, it will show us the headers and, uh, it will show us the IP headers, the data being sent, but that was not per the request. So, uh, we want to see a summary of all traffic going in and out. So to do that, we, uh, we use the, uh, the, the output or the summary. So that, that is denoted by the X command. So the X command, and then in here we specify the, um, 
the x dot summary uh, if i believe it if that was correct because we are specifying a summary so yes uh, we are printing it as lambda and the interface is ethernet zero uh, which is what we want if you want to specify any other different interface you can go ahead and do that so the summary yes we are printing out uh, the summary here and um, let's see because the summary if yeah okay so let's see what this prints out all right so definitely that's that's not what we're looking for because uh this is printing out oh yeah yeah so so this is correct i'm uh, i really have to apologize guys i'm i really need to polish up on my skills on scappy but i haven't gone through this in a while so you can see that this is displaying data very very um comprehensively but uh something that's not very readable so again for those of you asking how to perform uh how to perform sniffing with scappy there you are so uh, i'm just going to close uh i'm just going to close this and there we are so let me just clear the terminal and finally how to perform a dos attack now of course this um this is quite simple in in the sense that uh the understanding is very easy as i'm sure you have guessed it so we are going to be using the send command again so the send command and in here we specify the protocol ip and again now we select uh, our source all right so our source is going to be again you can spoof it to any ip again you, you can disguise this to look like it's coming from another device when in fact you're the one doing it so uh we can say let, let's use this the, the example we use 182.168.1.103 all right and we close uh sorry not close it we need to spe specify our destination port so um our destination port is going to be a uh, destination ip pardon me uh, we are going to look at ports right now so destination ip uh, let's say we are targeting uh, yeah we can perform a simple dos on my router 68 point so we'll perform it on the default http port which is port 80 um so 1 1.168.1.1 and um, then after this we specify the protocol in this case simple tcp uh, because it's the most reliable and that's uh, what's going to give us the best potency so uh, so there we are we specify our protocol tcp and then uh, we need to specify our source port so our source port is going to be uh, port 80 so this might slow us down because we're sending a huge number of uh, of packets or in the case of the router requests uh, or if you're targeting a web server the same principle applies so then you specify the destination port which is uh, you can specify whatever you want um, and then after this, we need to specify the amount of packets we're going to send. And that is done using the uh, packets, I believe. Yeah, packets. Uh, packets and the packets are going to be equal to, let's say, um, 10,000. We want to send 10,000 packets. I'm going to hit enter. And um, it looks like it started it. I'm not too sure what the issue is. Uh, for some reason, it's paused here. Let me just close that. Um, so let me just type that back again because that seemed to bring us an error sorry about that i'm not too sure about the syntax uh, as i mentioned i don't i think the syntax has changed quite a bit so the source is going to be 192.168.1.103 and uh, then the uh, the destination is going to be the same uh, i mean 192.168.1.1 and uh, after this we close that up uh, tcp and then in here we have the uh, the source port um uh, sorry about that um, the source port and that is going to be uh, port 80 and uh, our destination port is going to be port uh, port 80 as well and we close that up um, is this going to be packets or the count let's test that the count because I believe it was the same so let's test 10,000 and the same thing uh, brings it up right here. Uh, what I'm going to do, I don't really know what the issue is. Uh, what if we can try and reduce the amount of packets being sent? I'm not too sure whether that that will uh, will change anything. Um, so let's try a thousand packets and let's hit enter. The same thing applies here, which I'm not too sure why it's happening. Uh, probably to do with the port. So we can change the port. Control Shift V. Um, so let's see um uh, we can change the port to maybe something like triple four and we're targeting the other one so triple four and we hit enter 
and uh, whoops, yeah, for some reason we keep on getting this, uh, yeah, triple four, sorry. And we hit enter and yeah, so I'm not too sure what's happening here. I'll have to go through the documentation. The last time I actually analyzed this, we can actually monitor it in Wireshark. So uh, the same filters here. So let's keep on capturing, uh, continue without saving and the destination port. So uh, let's keep that running. As you can see, nothing really is going to the destination port. So there's probably something that I'm missing here in regards to the syntax and I'll have to definitely look at that. I'm not too sure what it is. If it would have told me if it was the, there was something wrong uh, with the syntax. Ah, oh, I see what the, 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 the mistake is. Sorry about this guys. I think I know the mistake is uh, foolish of me to uh, have forgotten the parentheses. Uh, so I'm going to hit enter and there you are. Fantastic. So that uh, you can see it is sending the 10,000 packets that we specified. So let's look at, oh, there we are. Fantastic. All right. So apologies for that, guys. I really need to brush up on my scappy syntax. I haven't taken a look at it for a while. So I'm actually glad I remembered half of what I did. Uh, the mistakes are really just simple. So there you are. It's going to uh, attack that port. If you just monitor, uh, yes, it is the port 80. We didn't change it to uh, to to the triple four port. So it's going to continue sending until they're all complete. And uh, this will probably slow down the device if it is a web server. Uh, that being said, there we are sent uh, 10,000 packets. And uh, there you are. So that was the last of the requests in regards to Scappy. Uh, sorry about the time it took, uh, you know, me just remembering my uh, the, the commands and the syntax. If you want me to post a cheat sheet for, uh, for Scappy, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to do that. In regards, uh, I mean, in um, in other uh, in the in the in terms of the other things I want to tell you guys, uh, the other announcement that I had, I'll be posting uh, really really in depth uh, written guides of these videos uh, on my website. So if you ever find that you have not understood something in the video, you can always check back on the website uh, and uh, the video. It'll be the same video title, and you'll be able to find all the other the information and the commands that I used. Uh, that being said, guys, I hope you found value in this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section uh, on my social networks or on the website, and I'll be happy to leave uh, to, to give you a reply or leave you some feedback. Uh, that being said, guys, that's going to be it for this video, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.